why am I watching this? You know, I've spent the last three years be being an ex-brony and uh, not really being interested in going back to being one because, well, in my opinion, the only good Mild Pony show there ever was was, of course, Gen 4. Again, getting stabbed in the back with Megatron's cannon. Anyway. Um, I don't know why I'm watching this. I just decided to make a reaction video on it. I'm getting stabbed in the back again. Anyway. Uh, yeah, let's just watch this and, uh, see what this is about. I moved on to being an anime, I moved on to being a weeb, but just because I had to be part of some fandom that I actually found interested in, and, uh, haven't moved on from that since, so let's see what this new video Late has Late 2010, a new generation of My Little Pony was announced to start airing on television. Yeah, I didn't start watching until 80s, 2014. The brand of My Little Pony has always been synonymous with one thing. Bow Girls. Yeah. Thanks to Hasbro's marketing for the past 30 years, the brand of Milo Pony has always been attributed with Bow Girls. And for 30 years, the people of the world Quote never unquote, had had. expected that to change. MLP was never meant to do anything other than sell toys to children. Because of that, the only people who would watch were children who didn't understand what made a show good. But one of those little girls grew up and was given the opportunity to make a new generation of the show and toys she loved as a kid. Her name was Lauren Faust. Yep. Lauren wanted something more than just another worthless show meant to sell toys. She wanted her show to appeal to the parents that would inevitably be forced to watch the show with... Yeah, you know, a show that wasn't annoying for her parents to wa watch while their kids spent hours watching new episodes. My niece and nephews, well, well, except for my oldest nephew, enjoyed the show a lot. Um, and while I don't watch it anymore, um... I'm gl I am glad to to know that um, my my older brother and his wife are not annoyed by the show as much as my parents were, being that uh, my parents are older than they are, so uh, they just didn't understand, and I honestly don't understand what I actually saw because the show just seems more cheesy to me. I guess mostly due to the fact that I moved on and then went directly into anime afterwards. So, as you can tell by, by some of the drawings I've done. Anyway, back to the video. They're children. And the only remedy to this conundrum would be to make the show actually good. This resulted in the creation of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Yes, that, that strange show that oddly got a lot of males hooked on it. Friendship is Magic aired its first episodes on October 10th, 2010 on the Hub Network. Where's Rodimus? I want to go mess with him for a bit. commercial for another generation of children to buy into. One article even Rodimus. called it Ooh. the end of creator era in TV animation. And one didn't age quite so well. However, the internet took notice of the new show and started trolling image boards by spamming images from the first yeah. few episodes onto sites like Memes. Portland. While most were annoyed by the oh, spam, boy. others became curious. As more and more people actually took the time to watch the show, many found it endearing and decided to watch the second episode. Yeah, the show was the actually good. I don't know why, but it was actually good. Into the fourth. Soon enough, people found themselves enjoying the show that they thought was meant for children. And thanks to the internet, they knew they were not alone. Yeah, I think that's oh, a question that every single funny. brony at first asked themselves when they first were becoming a brony was, what the heck is wrong with me? With me? And then they realized that it's okay because the show is actually really good. But once again, I don't barely ever go back to watching it, mostly due to the fact that I don't have live TV anymore. And even though it's on Netflix, I can't be bothered to want, watch the stuff on Netflix when anime pull, when anime attracts me so much easier. Communicating through 4chan, and would identify each other as Pony Bros. They later renamed themselves to Brony, or Bronies. And this is their story. Yeah, Pony Bro was not a very creative name. They have good songs in the mo in the show, though. Really good songs. By the year 2012, Brony started becoming more and more visible to the public. With the popular Brony Comp taking place with about 4,000 attendees, a documentary about Bronies, various news channels talking about the phenomenon, who actually watch My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, and they call themselves Bronies. Bronies had more attention put on them than ever before. As expected, very few were on board with grown men watching and enjoying a show made for children. I watched the show for the funny faces and for the and for the weird adult comedy that was occasionally put in the show. But other than that, 
Uh, let's see, what else did I watch the show for? Uh, memes. Let's just call it that. For worth hobbies for a young lad to have, like, <laughs> you know, terrorism. That's not a hobby. Am I wrong? <laughs> That's a one-way ticket to jail. But that right there, made for children. It wasn't exactly true. The brand was known for being a children's brand. But thanks to Lauren Faust, the show was so much more. Yeah, Lauren it was. wanted Friendship is Magic to be enjoyable no matter who watched it. I consider MLP to be the first show in what many call the cartoon renaissance of the 2010s. After 2010, cartoon shows Gravity were Falls. no longer a waste of time. That was also a really good show. Kids could enjoy, with a few exceptions. These hey, Phineas and Ferb was awesome. For kids. They were made for adults, appropriate for kids. This shift in focus is why there are so many great cartoons out today. But Friendship is Magic was different. It didn't get the attention of the mainstream because it was a good show. It got the attention of the mainstream because of the fans. Yeah. Bronies got plenty of hate for enjoying their show. It was all completely new to the public. Stereotypes had never been shattered on a scale this large before. But nothing ever deterred us. Instead of hiding from the public eye, we saw our strength in numbers and proudly flaunted our love of the show. Yeah, but they why? did. Where I was not one of those bronies, from? unfortunately. I didn't collect any of the toys. I didn't collect any of the plushies. I just kind of watched the show. And once the show was over with, I just kind of ditched it. Also, I do like the fact that they paid homage to the fandom with that one Slice of Life episode. It is very quiet upstairs. I don't know why. My parents go somewhere? Nope, they're still up there. I heard banging. Anyway, back to what we were doing. Just a silly show about colorful horses, right? When people ask me why I like Silly the show, is an understatement. The references in the show are crazy. Half of what being a brony is all about. The other half is the fandom. And what a wild fandom it yeah, is. Yeah, they were very, very strange. Oh, yeah. That, the, the song, yeah. Freaking Discord. Ugh. Yeah, they w the boys were a, cr are a crazy fandom. Okay, that was a good animation, though. I remember watching that. Okay, this is a good song. Anyone who was a boy remembers this song, like, like well. Really well. Some animations go rather questionable, though. Uh, like Rainbow Factory, we don't need to talk any more than that. That one was funny. Okay, that was Death Battle. That had nothing to do with Bronies. Flufflepuff, ugh. See what I mean? The show, the show is full of so many memes. Yeah, the Bronies React crew. The moon rises. The embodiment of chaos himself, which inspired one of my characters. Actually, so it's time to me to time for me to actually say something. The characters from from the MLP, like the main six, along with a few other characters, actually inspired one of the one of the teams of some of my other characters. Those being the Mega Masters. If you don't know what those are, you probably will if you actually go to my TikTok because I have made a few videos on them. Actually, more than a few. Um, but the Mega Masters are. The, the first six members of the Mega Masters are directly inspired by the main six from MLP. But they do not have the same personalities. Let me, uh, let me actually pull out the pictures real quick. And I drew... <sighs> okay. Some of them I've actually had to redraw recently, so they're not all as good as they could be because I haven't finished coloring them yet. So, uh... Let me, uh, real quick grab the phone. Okay, let me just skip over that. But these are the these are the characters I designed from scratch with the 
that one being my character. Um, keep going. Keep going. Scarlet. Thunderbolt. Here we go. Starting with Rainbow Shock, who instead of being a um, sporty type, she's a psychopath with a Warhammer and a bit of a Yandere, who, like, who's also immune to the forces of nature because her power is nature. You've heard of the phrase that Mother Nature is the most cruelest mother in the world. Well, this Mother Nature is the, is the most sadistic and crazy mother in the world. We have Sugar Rush, whose power is candy, and I gave her a scythe made out of a candy cane because I figured that's the only, only candy that actually looks like a weapon. And if you don't know, Pinkie Pie. Also, she's a Hippocampus. I went with a wide range of mythical creatures for this. She stayed as a Pegasus because I couldn't come up with anything else that fit the whole weather and nature thing. So I went with a Pegasus. Um, that's supposed to be what Rarity what um so Rarity was supposed to look like that. I mean that's what that character was Rarity at one point because this series was just meant to be a fan series of mine. But I loved it so much that I turned it into my own series, got rid of all the Mild Pony characters, and replaced them with my own characters that were based off of them. This one being Gemstone, her power is Earth manipulation, which is why she has the big sh the big diamond shield. Also another Hippocampus. And this one is based off Twilight. This is Stardust, and her power is Space. She's part Space Dragon, which um, the, I do multiple different kinds of dragon species too. Space Dragons being a, being a type that has like these weird butterfly-looking wings, but they don't really flap their wings. Their wings kind of generate an anti-gravity field that allows them to kind of like float as, as high or as low as they want. Anyway, next we have... Oh, that's another picture of Stardust. I, I did redraw some of these. So we have Lasso. She's a water dragon, and her power is... Um, plant manipulation. She is a farmer, so it's like similar to Applejack, but she doesn't specifically just do apples. She does just multiple different kinds of um, fruits and vegetables, mostly vegetables. And she can and she can manipulate plants and and use them to attack. And because she's a water dragon, she can breathe underwater and stuff like that. So this one, believe it or not, is supposed to be the Fluttershy one. Fluttershy is supposed to be like the shy character of the group, but this one is the complete opposite, where she is very aggressive and out and outgoing and she likes to get put herself in harm's way or go on adventures which is why she's wearing the explorer's outfit also she is a draconicus of my own design made up of different dra different dragons the tail is a water dragon the left wing is a space dragon the right wing is an insect dragon the horns are a fire and ice dragon and then the eyes are of that of a death dragon her other eye is covered because that actually is a different eye too and then this is Solstice, or Dawn. She has two different names. Dawn is her nickname. Solstice is her actual name. And she is a... She's an alicorn, um, which is a unicorn with wings. Uh, she has the power of sun energy, which is a very rare ability. And not very many Gladiator Masters actually have this ability. Some of them have more than... Some more Gladiator Masters than one will have, like, the same ability with, like, stuff that they do to make it their own. And then we have... Eclipsa, who is the one based off of Trixie. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Um, she's based off of Sunset Shimmer. If you don't know who that is. Um, uh, Eclipsa is uses illusion magic, which is an, which is, can also be used in stage magic, which is why she's dressed like a magician. And uh, one of her main abilities is the ability to just instantly just say what she wants and it'll appear. Kind of similar to the DC character Zatanna, but without saying the word backwards, because I'm not doing that. That's going to be hard for me to imp implement into my series. And then this is one, she's supposed to be based off of Starlight Glimmer, and uh, I haven't finished coloring it yet. I have, a be I have another picture of her, I think it's over here. Yeah, it is. So that's what she's supposed to look like. Um, I just redid it because I don't like how I accidentally made the black lines that outline the character's image too thick. So I'm redoing it and making the lines better after I'm done coloring it. Um, so here's the guy that I based off of Discord. And he's also a Draconiquist, but he's made up of different mythical creatures instead of regular animals. Being like Minotaur, to Dragon, to um, Sand, ro Sand, Sand Roller, which is a creature I made up. Um, Pegasus, dra Dragon, stuff like that. Anyway, and here's the guy based off of Spike, except he's red and his power is Rage. And he's kind of... His name is Ripclaw. His whole thing is that he, he's actually a very calm dude most of the time, but when push comes to shove, he can just force himself to get angry by thinking of something that he doesn't like. Anyway, that's pretty much the characters that I base off of that. Anyway, back to what, what we were ta talking about. Um, The show was, I made a little series that was supposed to be a fan series, 
But like I said, I love the series so much that I just decided to get rid of all the My Little Pony characters and replace them with my own characters, make it my, into my own series. Let's just uh, go ahead. Ah, son of a! My 3DS just dropped onto my foot. Actually, it was my 2DS, but it's pretty much the same thing, except it doesn't fold. Anyway, back to what? Back to this. Uh, back to the uh, trip down memory lane, I guess. <laughs> Griffin. I don't remember this animation. I don't think I've seen that one. What was that? That must be a recent animation. This is a Kieran involved. Sands and Papyrus. Why are Sands and Papyrus there? By the way, fun fact, uh, Vinyl Scratch was actually just a fan-made character, which they later added into the into the show, under the name DJ Pwn3, which turned out to actually be, just be her um, stage DJ name, Vinyl Scratch being her actual name, but they also made it so she never spoke, for some reason. They also added another thing, where in like a little fan, vi fan video, they uh, Vinyl Scratch and Octavia Melody, who was, an, who was another uh, pony that played on a cello, don't ask me how the physics in the show were weird. Um, they lived together in that they kind of were roommates in that little house, and in the show they actually acknowledged this and they lived in like a two like a like a two sided house where one side was blue to be Vinyl Scratch, and the other side was basic to be uh, Octavia, and they kind of just like were roommates in that house too. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Really? Nice transition. Language band. This is this is a this is a language friendly zone on my channel. Mostly. Yeah, you, you know, think? Brony, I hope you enjoyed that taste of what the fandom was for the past ten years. Ex Brony, but and if you yeah, are that's Brony, always appreciated. I hope you enjoyed that little nostalgia Ugh. trip. That's not As though. As you just saw, something about the show simply brought out the best in people. So many found creative sides of themselves. Yeah, the best in people. As people are complaining that Twilight should have never had wings. It's called character development, people. Let go of the past. They never knew they had because of the show. And it makes sense that the fandom produces amazing music, art, animation, and stories. These things are all aspects of the show itself. Friendship is Magic inspires us to create amazing things because it sets an example of quality. And the more fans created, the more fans would find the show. And then they would create something, and so on and so on. And the more the fandom grew, the more there was to do, to watch. There were more people to interact with. Website for me. Memes were shared. Conventions were had all the around the world. Meme. Oy. Every year, it felt like the fandom only grew in size and complexity. The show itself increased in quality and released spin-off movies. After every season, we would wonder, will there be another season? And there was. The show was supposed to end after season three, and here we are waiting for the seventh season, and then the eighth, and then the ninth, and then... Nothing. It was over after that. And then, well, 
the ninth season was announced to be the last. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. The show was reaching that point when it just needed to end on a high note rather than decline in quality until it was no longer profitable. Luckily, the show went off with a bang. Season 9 clearly had a lot of thought put into it. Yeah, and except that one. Staff knew it was the last season, it allowed them to try to wrap up a bunch of storylines and answer some questions that were left unanswered. But no episode compares to the very last episode. Season 9, episode 26, The Last Problem. I don't know how to explain the emotional impact this episode had on me and the fandom. To an outsider, it might seem... Before anybody questions about that gray pony with the blonde hair, just know that she's like the big, biggest fan favorite character for being in the background all the time. And because she has, I mean, she is known at, by three names. Ditsy Do, Derpy Hooves, or Muffins. And nobody uses that last one. Everyone just calls her Derpy Hooves. Or Derpy. To be about the characters. Because she has but the Derpy in face. in reality, it's the show saying goodbye to its fans. Just because things change doesn't mean you leave everything you love behind. Moving, leaving our friends. actually decent but um it's uh it's not g it wasn't g4 g4 was uh was still better i'm still not gonna go back to being a brony because uh the g4 show was probably the only show out of the, anything mlp that i was going to be interested in so uh even with the whole new um show coming out i'm probably not going to be that interested in it more excited for it than christmas and just two days after that will be the one year anniversary of the show ending and it does not feel like it's already been a year. It feels like just last week I was crying on my pillow because of colorful horses. Yeah, that's not an okay pillow, dude. We know what that pillow is. We know we don't do we don't show that here. Getting involved with the fandom changes you. The fandom is often referred to as a family, and there really is no better way to describe it. Think about the themes of the show. It's all about friendship. Anyone could be a brony, and the fandom would welcome you with open arms. A lot of people can relate to feeling like an outcast, but when it comes to the brony fandom, it allowed people to come together with others that they never would have met otherwise. Come! And it created a real sense of community. So many people simply found joy in sitting back for 22 minutes every day to escape to a world considerably less bleak than a room. The writing, characters, music, and animation all came together to present a real feeling of happiness without a hint of cynicism. Anyone can binge a good show. I mean, except for, like, the toxic parts for of the brony community. It would take a considerable amount of maturing just to put their pride away and give it a chance. And it's obviously not for everyone. Some people simply don't care to watch, and that's fine. But the lessons in each episode aren't just for children. They're for everybody. And the fandom takes these lessons of friendship to heart. Nobody is excluded for any reason. When someone needs help, we help them. When someone needs a friend, the fandom is there. And besides all the art, music, and other creative projects, that's where the core of the fandom sits. A group of people brought together by a show that nobody expected. And a message of love and friendship. Thanks to Bronies, the show went on for six more seasons than what was originally planned. And there will never, ever be another show like it. No, there won't. Which is why I'm not watching G5. Also, I love how it taught, it taught, it was supposed to teach about friendship and love, and then I'm just like one of the most bitter people to anybody who I don't know. Especially if they just rub me the wrong way. So if you're about to write something negative in the comments, I suggest you stop what you're doing and don't write something negative in the comments because I will gladly block you. <laughs> not so bitter of a person I am. Anyway, that was the video, and a little bit of uh, um, character showing from me. Um, I will see you guys next time.